today i am uh, presenting a very interesting case uh, it's a case of a 2 years old female child who got admitted to our hospital with the complaints of respiratory distress for about 4 days along with this complaint the mother noticed that there is swelling which appeared on on the face as well as on the limbs for about 2 days when i took the history of the illness the 2 year old child this child in about 6 months ago that is during winters this child got admitted with respiratory distress to a nearby hospital in narela and then the doctors had advised that this child is suffering from pneumonia for which the child was hospitalized for a day or so and the child was discharged the child got all right went home and took the medicines for about 5 6 days the child has been all right in between for about 4 5 months even after stoppage of the drugs but what happened the child even had gone to the after about 4 months or so they again the mother noticed that the child again starts having respiratory problem that is respiratory distress was not taking feeds that well and the mother noticed that for few days the child the respiratory distress has increased for which the child came to our hospital on examining uh, the there was no history of any suck rest suck cycles there was no history of any uh, history that the child has having any cyanosis any history of edema of the feet or of the facial puffiness earlier no history of any urinary complaints there was no history of any uh, rashes or any fever just prior to the occurrence of the respiratory distress so keeping all those things in mind when the child came the child on examination we found that the child had res severe respiratory distress the pulses were very feeble the child was having tachycardia and then when we examined this child this child had a liver which was quite big and it was about 7 cm below the costal margin respiratory distress and this child at that time we did keep in mind that this child is in congestive cardiac failure going into the uh, so this child basically on history previous history a negative history we thought that this child is suffering from a heart disease and landed up in congestive cardiac failure to our hospital going on to the so what could be the differential we see i always insist that after a good history maybe positive history and a negative history you should try to put your diagnosis that this what could be the causes now a child who has not been having any cyanosis in the early childhood child was born normally now regarding the birth history it was an uneventful delivery born in the hospital 2.5 kg child was handed over to the parents and the child has been all right as i said till 1 and 1/2 years so no history of any respiratory distress or recurrent chest infections earlier so it is unlikely that this child was suffering from any congenital kind of heart disease especially the asynodic kind of heart disease now when we when we examined this child as i said the child was in congestive failure keeping in mind the differential diagnosis to my mind comes the after of course the examination so i'll show you uh, the the as per the history we did keep in mind that maybe this child is suffering from a cardiomyopathy and most likely a dilated cardiomyopathy so that is why i chose this case because these cases are not very commonly seen and at this age most of the time you will have cases of asynodic and heart diseases so this is a child who appeared at 1 and 1/2 years of age and as i said now I, i'll just show you in a child who is uh, anything in the history yes i let me finish with the history first now there is no pre there is no family history of any heart disease there is no history this is a second child the first child is absolutely all right that also is a girl uh, who is about i think 12 years of age when i asked the parents and there is no family history of any heart disease other histories as i said birth history is okay postnatal is all right 
the child has been properly immunized and dietary history the child has been running around child has been accepting the feeds well and uh, that is all i would say so i think the first thing i kept in mind was that this may could be a case of a cardiomyopathy now when i whenever uh, not only the cardiomyopathy i'll talk in detail but whenever a child comes to us with the respiratory distress and uh, the child has got is as i said tachycardic pulses were very weak liver was 5 6 cm below the costal margin so you what all you look for so uh, this is the teaching which i would like to say so first of all you go in and look for the pulses that pulses as i always say in the examination that pulses what is the rate rhythm the volume that is what is and the character so these few things you always should learn or look for whenever you are looking and then you have to see the either the radio radial delay or you also see the either the radio femoral delay so that is very important in any child when you have of course since the child is very small as in the adults sometimes we don't give too much of an importance on the jvp because the neck is very small so you really don't see the jvp in this children okay this child was having no cyanosis the child was of course this child was pale so you can see the child the child is a little pale of course the child had no cyanosis no no cyanosis no jaundice and no lymphadenopathy now coming on to the anthropometry you must see in child whenever you have a case of heart disease you must keep in mind whether it is a chronic heart disease whether the child is having problems this child has been having problem for the last about 6 months so anthropometry as i always say in pediatrics is very important so you must look for the weight you must look for the length and when i i think i we took the weight and height this child is weighing about 10 kg 2 years old baby height is 84 cm so both are less than third centile there is less than the third centile weight for height is between minus 1 to minus 2 st and mid arm circumference of course is okay and that's about 13 cm now having said that this child is of course uh, having less weight less height and weight for height is also less but it is not uh, fitting fitting into this severe acute malnutrition but yes of course it is the weight is lesser so it is an underweight child that means something is going on for a very long time going into the dietary history dietary history of this child is quite okay so this child has been having the problem so as a pediatrician whenever you have a case of a heart disease you must look in for the anthropometry that how has been the child faring how how is the weight how is the height of this child so i, I have enumerated those things now when we uh, we got the uh, basic investigations done as i said the child was pale the child had a hemoglobin we got the cbc done and the cbc of this child was a child had a hemoglobin of 9.1 gram percent tlc was okay is about 11800 and platelets are within normal limit mcv of this child of course had 76 so it was uh, anemia was there as per the age and it was microcytosis okay now coming on as i said we got the x ray chest of this child done and x ray chest had shown us a cardiomegaly so as i said i told you that this child had come and we had kept in mind congestive cardiac failure but more, most important thing is you can't get an x ray done always you always try to focus on the apex beat so that is one thing which i would like to say now in a child who is now 2 years of age in a child up to 2 years of age usually the heart is seen in the fourth intercostal space inside the mid clavicle line but if you see uh, here on inspection i can see the pulse out here so the the apex bit which is the outermost and best placed is the here so if i start from the angle of louis this is the second space third space fourth space and rather fifth space and sixth space so it is in the sixth space outside the mid clavicle line and when i confirmed along with it on palpation this is on the sixth space so a child who is only 2 years of age has got a apex beat 
in the six space outside the middle gland. Why I'm insisting is that this is this part of examination. Most of the pediatricians don't do it. So whenever you have a child, the distress can occur because of the pulmonary causes also. But here, what is happening is that you need to see where the apex bit is. You try to focus it. You the apex bit is. Whatever I found it on inspection, it is at the same place, and that is on palpation. It is on the sixth space. Of course, there is no thrill which I am seeing. There is no second space. The P2 is not palpable on the left side, so that is one thing. No epigastric pulsations, no parasternal heave. So that is one thing you must keep in mind. So the, the, you, on examination, these things are very important. When are when you are doing the cardiac examination? So cardiac examination start with the apex bit on inspection, palpation you try to confirm it, and on palpation on the left side second space you always try to find it out whether you have a pulmonary second sound which is palpable or not, and any adventitious sound, any thrill whichever you are getting, which I am not getting it here. Now keeping all those things in mind, then from the cardiac. Then after that, I started the auscultation, and when I did the auscultation, the S1, S2 was normal, and there was no murmur which was heard. So this is a child who has got a murmurless heart, cardiomegaly. This child initially had, of course, weak pulses, so he was in congestive cardiac failure. Then after the CVS, we did this chest examination. Chest, of course, if you focus here, even now, this child has been on treatment with us in the hospital, and if you see. This child has got lower intercostal chest retractions. You can focus it here. See, so you have got chest retractions, which is lower chest retractions. But on examination, this child has got auscultation. There are no adventitious sounds. I can't, I couldn't auscultate the crepitations. And then coming on to the abdo. Abdo. The most important thing is the liver. So liver. Of course, I am not. Uh, the few things are there. Now you you try to see the liver. Liver is now even now even after treatment, this child has got a liver which is about five centimeters. You can see in the about mid clavicular line, this child has got a liver which is five centimeters below the costal margin. So the child has got liver which is five centimeters below the costal margin. We can do the margins are okay. The consistency is fine. There is no hardness. There is nothing. There is, there is no firmness, and it is not non-tender. And then I will do the upper border. See. Here there is impaired node. So the upper border is and liver is here. So this liver span is increased. And upper border of the liver is second, third, fourth, fifth. So fifth space, the liver, the liver is at the upper border is at the fifth space, and the lower border is five centimeters below the costal margin in the mid clavicular line. So that means the total liver span is increased. So this is a child with no splenomegaly, no free fluid in the abdomen. So no free fluid. Only thing is liver is enlarged. And on examination, I also forgot there was a history of facial puffiness. Whenever you are doing a general physical examination, you must look for the pedal edema. Try to press it for about 30 seconds on the close to the malleolus and try to press it and keep it pressed for about 30 seconds and look for any pitting edema. At present, there is no pitting edema, but when the child had come, the history was also there of the complaints and the child had got had the pedal edema also. So, this is a child who came to us with congestive cardiac failure. Now, as I said, we got the X-ray done. ECG, we, we tried to get the X-ray done because with ECG in the bed, but child was very irritable, so we could not get the ECG. But yes, we luckily we have the facility of uh, doing the echocardiogram uh, bedside. So I'll just tell you the bedside bedside echocardiogram when was done. It was done on admission and it showed that the cardiac chambers were all dilated and there was global hypokinesia and there was the ejection fraction was around only 10 percent. So that you can see this child had a global hypokinesia. So if you have a child 
ہو ہیز گاٹ گلوبل ہائپو کائنیزیا مرمرلے ساٹ کارڈیو میگیلی یو مسٹ ٹرائی ٹو کیپ ان مائنڈ دی ڈائلیٹڈ کارڈیو مایوپیتھی وچ دس چائلڈ از سفرنگ سو آئی واز وانٹنگ ٹو ہائی لائٹ دیٹ اے کیس یوزلی دے اپیئر ان دی ڈیورنگ دی فرسٹ ایئر آف لائف اور فرسٹ ٹو ایئرز آف لائف اینڈ دے پرزینٹ ود دی کارڈیو مایوپیتھی ناؤ وین ایور یو ہیو گٹ یو گیٹ اے چائلڈ آف کارڈیو مایوپیتھی جسٹ بریفلی آئی ٹیل اباؤٹ دیٹ واٹ آر دا کازز آف کارڈیو مایوپیتھی سو کارڈیو مایوپیتھی موسٹ آف دا ٹائم دی کاز از ایڈیوپیتھک دین یو کین ہیو سم جینیٹک کازز وچ از سین امن اباؤٹ ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی فائیو پرسینٹ اٹ کین رن ان سم فیملیز وچ آف کورس وی ڈنٹ گیٹ اینی ہسٹری اینڈ دین اٹ کوڈ بی اے پارٹ اینڈ پارسل آف دی ریئر ڈیزیزز لائک آف کورس دس چائلڈ از اسمال ان دی پیشنٹس ود دی مسکولر ڈسٹروفیز ایون ود دی مائٹروکانڈریل ڈیفیکٹس فیٹی ایسڈ آکسیڈیشن ڈیفیکٹس سو اف یو ہیو associated hypoglycemia you have other things these in non errors of metabolism sometimes they may also have the kind of a cardiomyopathy so glycogen storage disease which is called a pompous disease where also you can have this kind of a cardiomyopathy but this this was this child most likely we of course we didn't have the facilities for to do all these things but yes this child had a normal blood sugar yes one even important thing which i also was forgetting is as a pediatrician you must remember and you must always do the blood catching level it is a correctable cause i have seen about few cases if your mind knows the way i would definitely see and the serum calcium level if it is very low then it is called hypocalcemia leading on to cardiomyopathy we got the serum calcium uh, the done of in this child and this was about 8.8 so this calcium was normal the lfts kfts are all okay so this was a child thyroid profile has been sent of course it is abated but as i said you must keep in mind a correctable cause of cardiomyopathy that is hypocalcemia there is no evidence of any rickets in this child there is no evidence of uh, any widening of the rickets so you must see whenever you get a child of a uh, cardiomyopathy look for the widening of the wrist look for any evidence of rickets maybe rickety rosary or all the coffee all the signs which you see double malleolus so all those you must look for so this child now regarding the treatment when the child came as a child had a very poor uh, ejection fraction this child was started to reduce the preload we started this child on injectable lasix after the injectable lasix we since the ejection fraction was only about uh, 10% this child was initially started on dobutamine and after starting this child on dobutamine the it was given for about 2 days and this dobutamine was started with 10 microgram per kg per minute the child improved in about 24 hours time and then uh, we stopped the dobutamine and then after the dobutamine we started this child on enalapril so the mainstay of the treatment in these children is that you put these children with on pre- decreasing the preload by giving diuretics then your as inhibitors and in as inhibitors we started this child on enalapril started initially with 0.1 mg per kg and then later on we started the, we hiked it to 0.2 mg now this child is before you of course now this child is of course in the chronic congestive failure the liver was much below the costal margin it has reduced and it has now come to about 5 cm mild distress is there child is uh, running around child is eating now well and uh, you can see the child you can see the child is quite okay and uh, but then the child is in chronic congestive heart failure the other important thing which you must remember is that after starting this maybe after two f- weeks or so we would start this child on carbidolol or metoprolol because they modulate and they are very good for the cardiomyopathy so basically that is for the it acts as a modulator so that's what i wanted to talk about cardiomyopathy in a child and how you have to approach it what are the histories you need to take it and on examination what how you pick it up so it was a case sometime in the uh, cardio uh, the echocardiography it is dilated sometime you may pick up a murmur which could be a grade 2 murmur of the mitral insufficiency or tricuspid insufficiency but it was, this was not seen in this child